Hello and today I am looking at Unity which is a 3D engine. Attached to the 3D engine is my API that I'm using today which is called Mapbox. Mapbox is used for terrain rendering and what I'm doing today is evaluating it on three criteria ease of use, quality and generally trying to understand how the parts fit together. So what we have here on the left hand side we have the hierarchy we have a camera we have a light we have a map the map that is not loaded yet that's why you don't see anything we have some 2d type uh, billboards which you'll see when it loads and then we're going to interact with it so let me press play and let's have a look at what we have so on the right, top right we have geocoding so we can find out a particular place so if I typed in London it would look up the latitude and longitude and then we've got these particular uh, buildings and forests etc how they're representing the forests and down on the bottom right is a visual, visual uh, box as such where we're talking about vector tile data Vector tile data means that when we uh, zoom in, we will still have higher quality because however much we zoom in, it's created via maths. Um, the other alternative to this is rastering, which is bitmaps, where if you zoom in, it will look blocky, not unless you're doing some sort of image processing, which is a means of trying to make it look good via computer maths. So I've dismissed that and you can see that I can click on a particular object. This is picking. So I am putting my mouse over the screen and it's casting a line from the start of the screen from the camera to the object itself. You can see that if I'm holding down the mouse, I'm able to pan left and right quite easily. And as I am using the scroll wheel, well, you can see I'm going in and out and you can see a site level of detail here and if I change the main camera to zoom out you can see there is a giant what we call tile because we are trying to think about loading environments we may have a big environment from say 10 kilometers squared or circular radius to 200 kilometers for example and what we have here in a few different examples if i look at the map we have the ability to one we've got zoom levels to begin with in the same amount of space we've got the zoom levels and there isn't a intermediate between these zooms so if i go back out and I would need to work out what the possible scale of these zooms are to see how much space I would actually be seeing on these. The next thing, if I zoom out with the camera, it's necessary at times to, as if I had a moving object, to put to load a new section into it and it's quite easy when we look at the maps so we have a few different extent options so where the camera's looking range around the camera so that's where the camera is right now we have range around the transform and custom so at the moment I'll just leave it to range around camera and I'll just change one of the extent and you can see that as I have dragged it to two three four etc you can see that it had to load it, had to request it from the internet, for example, and then pull all the items down. The panning is still there, as we want, and it's possible to create different st styles for each of these maps. As you can see, as I changed the style, each one of these had to load separately. As I mentioned less, uh, earlier, we have these types of four or five different styles these are all vector based and then you have a satellite view as mentioned with satellite view they look great from a distance but then as we increase the zoom 
it may not look so good as we get closer. So de depending on the um, amount of internet traffic, for example, this could be much slower when we're zooming in and out and there's no intermediate type experience. This is zoom level zero, which is the world. Zoom five, you can see a certain level of scale. This would be quite easy to put in a map and you might have to do some sort of fade to black and fade it back in for a different zoom level. We have retina, which hi use high quality images. We have compression, which means when I want to pull down this tile from the internet, it has to be compressed. So therefore it'd be smaller and should get there faster. And then we have MIP maps, which are uh, the idea that we have a picture at this zoom level and another picture at another zoom level. And MIP map means to create intermediate images between them. So it looks like there's a uh, better experience when we're, for example, zooming in. So in this case where I'm zooming in very slowly, it would create different level of uh, MIP maps. And what we also have is around this terrain on the bottom right. We have flat terrain, then we have terrain with elevation. And at the moment, because we're so far away, you cannot see it. And as part of that, we have an idea of exaggeration if we wanted. And you can see there's just a slight movement. If I zoom in more, oh, too far. If I zoom in more and actually change this to, it's harder to tell with um, this satellite based view than it is to look at another type of view. You can see that it is not flat so we have two types of option terrain with elevation and then we've got low polygon terrain and the idea is is if our internet connection was very slow and we always need internet connection to use this because tile based data from any just system uh, is always updated so caching it would not make as much sense it might make sense to cache five seconds worth but to cache something for two years will not make sense. And so what we also have is map features. So if we decided to add more things on, in this case we have parks or how it's used, then we are able with code to add these various different things on as we see fit. And then as we saw on this experience, we have the camera movement and panning. So if I were to look at one of these scripts, a script tells us how to um, control the object it's attached to. So let me have a look. What this is gonna do is load up the uh, current script I've got. So attached to this particular object is the camera movement script and it's got three public or four public uh, variables, the map, pan speed, zoom speed and reference camera. And the interesting thing about Unity itself is everything seems to be done via reflection, which means that if you are if you are doing something via uh, when you make a change in the code, then what happens is, is when you go back to Unity itself, it will recompile and it will show you any errors right there and then. And sometimes that can cause a delay because then you'll have to go back to Visual Studio once more, uh, correct whatever issues it has, and then you can close Visual Studio. The next thing is that if we have a look at the map box side, I'm, so I'm just getting Visual Studio uh, running in the background, it's new PC. We have map box and we have the various different settings we have. 
for uh, let's say putting in the API etc what we also have is that we are able to create various different things which I haven't uh, examined in detail to extend or change Mapbox itself and there are a few different examples that we can look at so this is uh, one example and if I have a look at the project here and we have a look at the globe again we have a hierarchy we have a map and what's interesting about this API is we have a preview button so we're able to see the same experience without having to run it in the run mode latitude and longitude the zoom and we've got tile provider was saying that a section can be in tiles we have a similar sort of pattern before again this is controlled with the mouse so there we are that's it in terms of that interaction and on this spawn on globe this is a 3d representation of a map so i would be able to easily load this and put on other custom markers and then have these uh, markers interactive in some way if i wanted to so do we have anything else that could be interesting So we looked at the data explorer. For those that may be interested, we also have ability to create voxel maps. These used to be very expensive. But these voxel maps are representations of the 3D world. You can recognize this as Minecraft. This is just for the sake of completeness. And let's see if zoomable map works or not I do not know dynamic zoom and pan it, panning so let's have a look we could control this with code so these different zoom levels you can see that they are major um, there are separate pictures we're not seeing the intermediate between these two pictures those would be the mip mapping that I mentioned earlier so let me go on the map itself zoom speed it mentions nothing about the, the mip mapping that's what I care about you can see Ideally, it would be a bit smoother. We can see that it goes up to, well, pretty much 22. So that has to be figured out if we look at that. Let's have a look at the other settings. So it's already got MIP mapping, terrain with elevation. And what's interesting is there's no... Um, There's no caching that I could see. I think in advance I saw a script around um, for a certain location you can it's because I've just did the panning speed. For a certain location you have to request a number of tiles around it so when you zoom in there's no big delay if you've got a slow pan do you want you can see there's an obvious switch between them I don't know if we can smooth that any further it's a bit I think the reason why we experience that though let's zoom out I'll tell you what I'm doing in a minute This is changing the scale by changing the zoom. Now let's look at the camera. 
Okay. So, what I'm doing now is I'm changing a high zoom level and then maybe I can add lots more space. Okay, this makes more sense. What I'm trying to do is have a quick look at what the possible zoom layer is. Let's clip in plane. 100,000. We have the highest level zoom to see the highest level quality. Then, as I zoom out, there will be tiles not loaded. And then the system will make a request for those tiles. At the moment, I haven't done loading of the extends but you can see this is very high quality but there'll be a trade-off between the extents the zoom level as extents as in how wide and how far the zoom level um, whether it's really up front which we can see lots of detail or a low level on the zoom in order to get that balance right in order for the immersion not to be lost so that's it really for Mapbox.